everybody, I'm Amy from From the Cauldron and in today's episode of Dye Time I have this new to me fibre. This is milk protein. I have absolutely no idea how it has become this fibre but uh, it's super soft and I have just spun up a little bit of this and that's going to be another video. And while I was spinning it I noticed just how easy this was to break. Can see it's just coming apart very easily so I'm going to have to be very very careful when I dye this. This milk protein fiber has been sitting in water and vinegar because it's a protein fiber for probably close to a month now. Uh, I didn't intend to leave it that long but life happens and so it's yeah, it's had a really good uh, soaking in uh, in the in the pre-soak. So the what I'm doing now is just adding on the rest of the new emerald green that I had left over. Didn't realise quite how much I had. This <laughs> is a lot. This this is a gorgeous colour. But it seems a little goes a long, long, long way. And I still have this left, which uh, I wanted to use in this, but there's quite a lot of liquid in there. I love this colour because it's such a potent colour, but it's such a potent colour as well that, uh, well, I don't want it to be so potent. It's quite tricky. Now I've just watered this down a little bit. So, but still, I've still not managed to get much to use all of it. That's not a problem. I have some extra skeins on hand. Because it's a fibre reactive dye, you can't store it in a stock solution in the same way that you can with acid dyes. Because it starts reacting as soon as it hits water and then it's useless. I think you have I think it's about a 24 hour window, I think. I'm hoping someone can correct me on that. There we go, I've actually managed to use it all. Fantastic. But this is now a lot wetter than I had hoped. Now I've got my surface protected with a towel and I have got this on top of cling film as well because I'm going to steam set this. So I'm, I'm just uh, mopping up some extra excess here. I've got my gloves on and right I think yeah I'm going to carry on with my original plan. This is wetter than I had hoped but making sure my hands are completely dry because I'm now going to go into chartreuse. I've got my mask on now. This is quite a chunky dye that I don't often use and I've been trying to get myself to use dyes today that I don't often use. So I'm just speckling this on top now. I have absolutely no idea what this will end up looking like. And it's quite, quite chunky. It's quite difficult to speckle with. I'm just rubbing my fingers together like this. I'm going to try flipping it with my left hand. I'm not expecting like really fine speckles because this is so wet. I'm expecting there to be a lot of spread. I'm just hoping that the colours will go quite nicely together. There's some bits that have come through already so what I'm going to do is get a pinch of dye in my fingers, drop it and then so there's just a little bit of dye left on my fingertips and I'm just going to rub my fingertips together to get off that excess dye. Now a great thing about animal based fibres is that you can use both fibre reactive dyes and acid dyes on them. You can use uh, food colouring as well. It's great, you just need um, vinegar or an acid and heat to set this. So I'm going to steam set this. I'm happy with this now. I have got dye on my fingers, so I'm just going to splodge bits of this 
over. I don't know how well this is going to work. Again, this is a lot wetter than I had hoped. But I'm really hoping that the new emerald green as a background works well, work well with the chartreuse. I don't know. Right, wash my hands. I'm just going to wrap this up. And just like this. Such a silky fibre. And I'm going to pop it in my steam basket and let this steam for probably about 40, 45 minutes. This fibre has completely cooled down now. So I'm going to be very gently wash it. Uh, there is a lot of uh, dye in here in the cling film and there was colour in the pot as well and there is colour coming out here too. Not surprised, I did use a lot of dye, a lot of liquid in this. So I'm just going to very, very carefully just rinse this through. I don't want to felt it. In fact, what I'm going to do, I've got here just a pot of, pot of cold water. This has got a bit of soap in it already now. I'm just going to let it soak in this water very gently and then I'm going to change the water a few times but hopefully that might be it it might might be that all the color has now come out into here but I'm not overly worried about getting the water to go clear with this fiber right now because I will spin it and then it will get washed again so uh, there, will, there will be another chance for this to be washed and uh, get all the dye out but that's looking pretty clear to me. So I'm just gonna be very, very, very carefully let this soak and then I'll hang it up to dry. And here is the gorgeous milk protein fiber. I love it. It's so soft and silky and you can still see the, the new emerald green background and you've got the chartreuse um, splodges that I did and you can still see both of them. And I just love how these two colors have worked together. And if we have a look, there's a bit of blue there, or sort of a, a lightish, bluey, greeny colour, which I'm guessing has come from the new emerald green breaking. Um, but it looks really lovely together. I absolutely love this. And I'm now going to go spin this into some hopefully gorgeous yarn. I've spun the fibre, I have set the twist, and now I have a skein of yarn made from milk protein. And that's a sentence I never thought I would say. But here we are. And I have loved every step of dyeing this fibre and turning it into yarn. This fibre is so, so soft and silky. If we have a look at the colours, I think you can still see the, the two different shades of green. There's definitely a yellowy green there and a green green there. And they've blended together nicely and... I think it looks lovely all together. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I have enjoyed making it. I have, as I said, I have loved this process and I would love to dye more of this unusual fibre in the future. Is this something you'd like to see me do? Let me know down in the comments. And I'm hoping to add these unusual fibres to my shop as well. So if you'd like to purchase anything, uh, hopefully by the time this video comes out I will have my shop online. Fingers crossed. If not, I am from the cauldron across social media so reach out to me there. I publish a new video every Monday, usually around about 6pm UK time. And in these videos I do like to experiment with different unusual fibre types, different dyes, different techniques. So make sure you are subscribed and got notifications turned on so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.